Hi everyone and thank you for tuning into this video. My name is Debbie and I am from Spill the Tea Leaf Readings and More. In this video, just in time for Valentine's Day, I'm going to focus on romance and relationship tarot spreads. For anyone new to these videos, I do want to say that the cards I'll be showing you are just examples and I'm not actually reading for an actual person. It's all in service of showing you what the tarot cards can do for you. And of course, if you like what you see, let me know, subscribe, and maybe even get a reading with me. If that is something you're interested in, you can email me at info at spilletealeaf.com. To get started, I have three different three card spreads for you. There are lots of three card spreads for romance out there, but many focus on what the other person is thinking or feeling. And unless both partners are doing a reading together, I advise against using those spreads. They are popular and there are plenty out there of all card links, but the cards cannot actually tell you what someone else is thinking or feeling. What they do tell you is what you think they are thinking or feeling. So I just avoided as many spreads of that nature uh, in this video altogether. That being said, they are easy enough to find if that is something you want to look into. To read this slide, each reading goes across. So one signifies one whole card spread. I didn't label the cards themselves to try to make it less confusing. All right, so for these first three examples, we have the Two of Pentacles, the Page of Pentacles, and the Ace of Cups. I will use these cards for each of the three spreads here in turn. First, you are someone who likes being organized, but also someone who's always busy doing this or that, or sometimes that and this. The other person is an idealist who is always looking for a new opportunity, especially one connected to money. Maybe they are an inventor or constantly looking to move up in their career. The relationship is full of love and promise, uh, you got to love that Ace of Cups. <laughs> all right, second, you are united by all the activities that you do together. You both love to multitask and aren't fans of downtime. What divides you is that you're always looking for what's next rather than focusing on what you currently have. What to focus on is your relationship. Do you still feel the same way about each other as you once did? Is the love still there? If so, spend time nurturing it and spending time on just the two of you together away from other people and all you have going on in your lives. Third, love interest number one is someone who is really good at managing their finances and other things. Uh, love interest number two is at the beginning of their financial journey but has lots of potential. So far, this is reminding me of that song, Two Princes, where you have one guy with diamonds in his pockets and the other who wants to give you rockets <laughs> but has nothing. Uh, thanks, Ben Doctors. Okay, so how to decide. Trust how you feel, go with your heart, and with your intuition. Having the Ace of Cups as the third card here was not on purpose, but boy did it work out. Uh, moving on. So there are a number of five card spreads, and here is the first one from Astro Style. For the first card, we have the Five of Pentacles reversed. This is you. You are afraid to show your vulnerability and to ask for help when you need it. Card two is the Ace of Wands. The other person is passionate and creative and always seems to be inspired. Card three is your relationship, represented by the Nine of Cups, which I'm reading um, up as upright as it is facing right. The relationship is in a really good place. You are both comfortable and happy. In the past, you struggled. Maybe one of you was pulling the weight for both of you, but based on that last card, that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. The Nine of Wands reversed was the past card. Uh, the Fool is the future, which is telling me that either the relationship won't last and we'll both be starting over, or that you'll be starting a new journey together, such as marriage or parenting. Either way, it's not a bad thing, it's just new. My gut, based on the other card, is that you'll start a new journey together, but that first card does give me pause. If you don't figure out how to get past these fears, I don't know that you'll want to start a new journey together. Of course, this is all hypothetical. This cross-relationship spread is from Lab Labyrinthos. <laughs> this is uh, a very familiar, it's a very similar one to the last one, but has uh, a bit of a different flavor. So I wanted to include them both for you. We have the hermit for your role in the relationship, which is showing me that you're always searching for something in the relationship, which could be good or bad. Um, your partner's role is death reverse, so they're always starting over, letting things end and leaving them behind. 
so far this doesn't feel like a good match. Um, the past foundation is built upon the Knight of Swords. So this started as a whirlwind and, and maybe even passionate romance. And your current state is one of disharmony shown by temperance reversed. So far, the picture I'm getting is that your partner has been the one keeping the whirlwind aspect of your romance going, whereas you are constantly searching for stability and trying to see if this is meant to be long term. Your partner isn't about the future, but more about the now, and this has caused disharmony. The last card, the future, is the Queen of Wands. Is this you or is this your partner's new romance? I'm not definitely, uh, I'm definitely not sensing that this card represents your partner, but that is also a possibility. It feels jarring after the rest of the cards as the queen is a warm, friendly, uh, confident, and, and creative force. I just feel like you can't become the queen while in this relationship, but once you leave your partner behind, you can step into the queen's shoes. Sorry. <laughs> I actually hate doing spreads like this and having to tell someone that their relationship isn't working, but sometimes you need to hear it from an uninvolved third party in order to allow yourself to hear something that you already know. All right, so uh, mindbodygreen.com brings us our last five card spread and goes a little deeper. The current aura around your current relationship is the Ace of Pentacles. That's great. Uh, you help each other be your best selves and you're really grounded together. The area that needs attention is judgment reversed, which shows me that you are not confident in your relationship. You need to figure out if this is what you want or not, because self-doubt can ruin things even when they're at their best. The Six of Cups is the area to grow together. I'm going to interpret this two ways. One, you need to make more memories together, so go out and do things and have adventures. And two, you could both be a little more giving towards one another. So I'm sensing that maybe some complacency has set in and you're both just kind of sitting around with each other when you're both home and that's it. What you should pay more attention to is the King of Cups. Is that your partner? That's one interpretation. Pay more attention to your partner. It could also be indicating that you need to check uh, to see if your feelings for, for one another are genuine, which brings me right back to that second card, actually. The most likely outcome is the Seven of Wands. So... You'll be fighting for your love and it won't be easy, so I guess the conclusion is that you need to decide now if it's worth it because what's the point in sticking up for love with all of your being if it's not worth it? This next one is also from mindbodygreen.com and is about finding a compatible partner. This is a good check-in one to do for yourself that can also guide you towards finding love. I don't consider this one to be a straight-up self-love spread, but it's right on the line. I can do a whole separate video just on self-love spread, so this is the closest to that you'll find here today. Where am I in search for a partner right now? Based on the Four of Cups, you're not. Uh, you're sitting there unhappy that you don't have a partner while also missing what's right in front of your face. The challenge you are currently facing is the Wheel of Fortune, so things are going well for you and you don't want to tempt fate by getting involved with someone who might rock the boat too much. The Ace of Swords is telling us that you need to find someone who can accept and love you for your intellect. Don't dumb yourself down for anyone. <laughs> the Four of Wands reversed is letting you know that, letting you know what needs to be shed, uh, what you need to let go of in order to move on. This is showing that, again, you're so caught up with what you don't have that you can't see your own path forward. You see all your friends getting married and moving on, and you're there with them, but you're not getting what you need out of it. So let go of that image in your head. Understand that everyone's path is different and let all of those thoughts go. And the best way to approach finding the right relationship is to move forward. Uh, the chariot waits for no one, so hop on and see where it brings you. It may bring you to a whole bunch of horrible first dates, but if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. And finally, the Hierophant Reverse is all about believing in yourself and breaking from traditional conventions. So the most aligned action you can start taking today is to start your journey your way, not the way your friends or your relatives did it, but the way that works for you. If you don't like online dating, fine, go to more events. If you suffer from social anxiety, then get to know people online first. I don't know, do what works for you and believe that this is the best and only course of action. We're going to see a lot of spreads from the Emerald Forest today, and this is the first. This is a love compatibility spread, and uh, be careful when laying out the cards in this one. 
So for this spread, you actually don't want to pull your first card as you normally would. Instead, go through your deck and find the card that you think best symbolizes the other person. I pulled the King of Pentacles. It was actually random, but I would say court cards are probably the best place to start when looking for a card like this. You certainly don't have to limit yourself just to the court cards, though. So this reading will actually be starting with uh, card two, since in theory you already know what card one is since you pulled it purposefully. The Ten of Cups reverse is showing how much love potential the King of Pentacles has. I'm going to interpret this as not a lot of potential. Like, he looks great on paper, but won't work out for you beyond that, or at least not the way you're hoping. The Knight of Wands shows how aligned your morals and views are to each other. There's passion, there's creativity, but there really isn't a foundation there, so it seems that any shared morals and views might be somewhat superficial. Nine of Wands answers, are we compatible and how long will we be together? I mean, it just looks like this relationship will exhaust you. You are not compatible. Run in the other direction. <laughs> Sorry, this is not a fun reading, is it? Um, I'm going to finish it, though. To increase your compatibility, you have to work together to get aligned and start looking towards what your future together could look like. I'm feeling like couples therapy would be a good answer to this question. Uh, and finally, card six, the three of swords reversed. When reversed, I tend to read this card as recovery from heartbreak. So if you take this advice, will this relationship work? Um, oh boy. Okay. So on the surface, yes. But based on the other cards, it's going to take a lot of work, like a lot. Is, uh, is he or she or they worth it? Do you truly believe that you can become more aligned? If so, use this advice to improve the relationship, but be prepared to have your heart nearly break in the process. Of course, I could also read this last card as no, simply because they will break your heart, but you'll get over it and move on. Actually, I like that one better. <laughs> this spread from mindbodygreen.com is a current relationship assessment spread. I really like the last two questions here. What lessons am I learning through this relationship and what should I pay closer attention to? We have the world reversed for our first card, which is just telling me that your relationship is a work in progress. Card two is the four of swords reversed, so you're bringing lots of activity to the relationship, like why rest when you can constantly be doing things? What are they bringing to relationship? Oh, I really like this. Are the qualities that match well with what you bring to the relationship? Like if you're constantly planning outings for the two of you, your partner is, I don't know, like uh, making sure you don't forget to eat. Um, that's a, a bad example, but it's like if you plan a day of hiking, they will bring a gourmet picnic for you. Hopefully that makes more sense. Uh, your potential together as partners is the empress. So lots of potential. I would say even raising a family together potential. The lessons you are learning are how to relax a little more and enjoy surprises and the unknown. And finally, you should pay closer attention to the King of Wands. Okay, so this is similar to another spread I just showed you. This could be an aspect of yourself, like your leadership qualities or passions, but it could also be a stand-in for your partner, even for someone else who could get in the way of your relationship. For this example, I'm going to say it's making sure you don't lose yourself in your partner or relationship. You are very strong. It's okay to compromise, but it's not okay to change for someone else or hide away your true self. Here is a relationship issue spread from Emerald Lotus. This is very focused on you and how you can work towards fixing the relationship, but includes a question about what you need to stop tolerating, which is really important because some relationships can't be fixed and it is certainly not the job of only one person to do so. You may come out of this reading feeling like the issues can't be fixed and the, um, and the relationship needs to end and that's okay. Remember, you you also don't have to listen to what the cards say, but you are asking for a reason, right? As you can see, I am using the same cards as last time, but in a different order. Here we have the Three of Pentacles describing the relationship right now, which shows me that you both bring things to the relationship that keep it thriving. The disharmony that's occurring is that neither of you knows when to relax. Uh, this challenge, the disharmony, is illuminating the Empress. She wants this relationship to work out, but she is showing that you both need to be more understanding and nurturing of the other's needs. You are contributing to this disharmony by constantly trying to ignore it. You want this chapter to be done with, but you haven't put in the work yet. You need to stop tolerating the moon. Hmm. Um, 
Does your partner spend all his nights out? Either go with them or ask them not to go out as much. Uh, to move forward, you need to be confident, put your best foot forward, and have a conversation with your partner about your needs. But do it as the king of wands. So be passionate, wink, wink, uh, and do this with a flourish of creativity that only you can do. This will, uh, this will we last spread is from Emerald Forest. It helps you look back at the relationship while also looking ahead. The last question does a lot of heavy lifting though. It is, it is actually asking two questions of one card. All right, so the Queen of Pentacles is grounded, caring, and has everything they need in life. Uh, that is what attracts you to your partner. The Seven of Swords. Your partner may be attracted to your survival skills. You do what you need to do to get by in this life. You first spotted them when they were at the top of their game. Uh, the Nine of Pentacles shows the growth they had to show for themselves. You connected through something that moved you both, like a cause or a movie or a friend in common. That's the Queen of Cups. The Ten of Swords is showing that your relationship will definitely be shifting over time. It looks like it might be ending or at the very least as if you'll need to take a break and find a way back to one another and start over. Will this relationship last? And what can you do to make it a success? Look, the King of Swords reverse is a ruthless and cunning warrior. If you want to be him, you can certainly make the relationship a success, but at what cost? I would just take this as a sign that it's not going to last, and that's okay. This isn't something that needs to be survived, just something worth experiencing. All right. Another emerald forest spread. This is the unrequited love spread. The rest of the spreads are all from emerald forest, so I won't be mentioning them again in each slide, just FYI. I'm going to get really personal for a second. Um, I really think I need to do this spread on myself right now. Unrequited love is the worst and the story of my life. Uh, so because the layout is the same, I'm using these cards again, I know, but the numbers are different, so watch out how you lay these cards out. Uh, the fourth and sixth cards are the reverse from what you might expect. So basically, this is a straightened circle. Start with one and go around to get to the six. So we start with the three of pentacles, a familiar card at this point. However, in this spread, it's answering a question about exercising emotions in a healthy way. So this is saying that you have to stop thinking about how good the two of you will be together, as tempting as that is. Can you remain friends with this person or should you make a clean break is answered by the Empress. She is happy being friends with this person, but she's also a very nurturing individual. So if you can't be a shoulder to cry on when your unrequited love comes to you about their latest breakup, you need to make a clean break. If you truly think you can handle it, stay friends. Ah, uh, the moon card. Um, I'm interpreting this one as the dreams and fantasies we have at night in the dark. So yeah, it's extremely likely that you projected love on this person and idealize them in your mind. The immediate action you should take to overcome this is to have more confidence in yourself. If this person isn't into you, that is their loss. You are passionate, creative, the whole package, but maybe just too strong for them. So put yourself out there and see if anyone else is interested in, in you and all your awesomeness. <laughs> Uh, you need to stop tolerating the idea that you need this person, or anyone really, to be fulfilled, to be whole. You you are already whole. And finally, uh, the long-term action plan you should take is to take action. Go on dates with other people. Hang out with other people. You may meet someone, but even if you don't, it's a good distraction. Are they the one? It's our one and only seven card spread today. There is one question that actually asks, are they the one? Uh, but all the cards that surround that one, which is in the center, are really going to color how you interpret that card. I will say that the seventh card ventures into the territory of trying to read a person who is not part of the reading, but this is something that you might know or have an inkling about, so it's fine to include it in my mind. Okay, so our first card is the Knight of Pentacles reversed. Uh, so a crucial part of your relationship is how stubborn your partner is. This sounds negative, but someone who is stubborn can also be someone who never falters and always stands up for what they believe in. The challenges you may face are the Five of Swords reversed, which I usually see as shame or defeat. So it looks like there's always a winner and always a loser in your relationship, and that is not a good thing. The habit or part of your life that will need to change is the repetition. So it's time to shake things up in order, in order to make space for your love to flourish. This may be extra hard for your stubborn partner, 
Um, okay, so let's see. Are they the one is the eight of swords? In a word, no. <laughs> you are trying really hard to stick it out, but you've just trapped yourself. However, this person can teach you what it feels like to have successful relationships. That's the Ten of Pentacles. After all, this must have been successful at some point, right? What you need from them is investment in you. But if this relationship is doomed, you probably won't be getting that. And finally, what do they need from you? Justice. They need the truth. They need you to end this relationship because they will not. Also notice that the lack of cups and wands speaks to the lack of emotion, love, and passion in this relationship. So you can do better. Here is an invite romance spread. Uh, the way this is worded makes it seem as though this is about someone you already know, but it, it's not. It's all hypothetical. Uh, this is another spread that I think I need to use on myself later. Okay, so <laughs> the Two of Cups is always a good card to show up in a relationship spread. Here it is saying that you appreciate true partnership. You're not just looking for romance. You're looking for someone to complete you. Uh, the Page of Wands reverse is someone who isn't a self-starter, but once they get going, they can be very creative and passionate. So that's something that you admire and respect in a lot of people, that passion and creativity. But also you have the understanding that having those things doesn't mean that they also, uh, you know, they, they have highs and lows. The weakness you notice in yourself is the four of pentacles. This can be about control, but I'm going to interpret this as you are a very material person. Uh, you like things. The emperor reverse is saying that someone who has the opposite weakness would not be able to guide you because they would just create chaos. Your opposite is the Eight of Wands, um, someone who is very active. The star reversed shows where you have been hiding or limiting yourself. This shows that you are full of self-doubt and you are afraid to let yourself shine. I love that this spread starts with the Two of Cups and ends with the Lovers, uh, <laughs> just by the way. Um, Card seven, how can I be more open and vulnerable in new relationships? Well, the Knight of Cups is is great for that. Um, he's all about romance and poetry. So he's just saying, he's saying you have to be open. You have to open up your heart. <laughs> um, and then that lover's card, you want a true partner. And the advice shows two people who are just that. Of course, this card isn't that simple, is it? Uh, the advice you should remember is that you have to choose to love. If you sit around and assume that it will choose you, then you will be sitting around forever. Is this lust or love? Well, this spread will help you figure that out. It's worth mentioning that I don't know if I laid the cards out right, but unlike in the picture of how the cards are supposed to be, this forms a heart. <laughs> okay, well anyways, we start with the Page of Swords reversed. This guy is ignorant and does not want to learn from mistakes. So yes, you have a habit of losing yourself in the thrill of someone new because that is your pattern and you are unable to break from it. The Queen of Swords is showing that this relationship only serves you fully if you are honest and upfront about it. Well, so far I'm leaning towards lust for this relationship, but let's keep going. The Eight of Cups is showing that yes, you may be distracting yourself with intimacy to avoid a difficult situation. There is something that you need to walk away from and leave behind, and this relationship is the thing you need to distract you from that pain, but I do think it will also help you walk away, so it's not all that bad. The Page of Cups is showing that there are always new things to learn about this person you are seeing, but that you are also romanticizing them. Everything's new and fresh, so that's not surprising. Uh, do you know and agree with their values, morals, and views? Strength Reverse tells me not only that the answer is no, that you haven't been letting them know your true morals, etc. You've just been agreeing with them and letting them project themselves all over you. The tower reversed. Uh, look, I, I think it's obvious where this is headed. Uh, your future goals and wishes do not align, but you will do your darndest to pretend that's not the case. The five of wands shows that you are conflicted about this person, even post-coital, and that hasn't changed. If this were a real reading, I feel like I'd ask why this person is even asking me this question. They totally know this is all lust and only lust. The devil has shown up as the last card. If you remove the physical intimacy, all that will remain of the relationship is you feeling attached to a person you may not even like. Yikes. This spread is for you if you are in a long distance relationship. The last question here is again, 
asking something about your partner that the cards aren't going to be able to tell you 100%, but you may already have the answer to this question inside. I would recommend having a discussion with your partner after doing the spread and not just relying on this alone. Okay, so for the hidden perks of your relationship, we have the Six of Swords, which I see as a sign that you are really there for each other and work together to get through the rough patches. The Three of Wands Reverse is about the logistics of scheduling and time differences, which is just telling me that you have to really make concrete plans to make this work, but that is doable if you take the time to do that. What you are sacrificing is the Six of Pentacles, so you may not be able to continue giving your time to other people or projects that you love in order to make this relationship work. Like maybe you've all, uh, like you always have book club on one particular day and time each month, but that's the only time that you and your partner can both be guaranteed to have time for a good long FaceTime chat. Uh, the Seven of Cups is about your relationship aligning with your virtual goals. I would say that this is suggesting that you have a lot of dreams, but you haven't chosen one yet. So. It's hard to know for sure if this relationship would be in alignment or not. You'll have to choose something to find out. The Three of Cups does suggest that your plans as a couple are supported, and the Hey Man Reverse is telling you that there is still a new perspective to gain and trying to find a new option for how to make this work. In order to support yourself as an individual in this relationship, you have to trust yourself. That's the High Priestess. Ooh, the Sun is usually a good last card to have, but let's see. Your partner needs your optimism, your hope, and your radiance. That's how you can support them from afar. Depending on how you are as a person and how they are as a person, this either means that they want you to be yourself or it means that they need a lot of positivity and you may have to fake your feelings for them when you're feeling down. That being said, that is temporary. And going back to the very first card, you've both been able to work together to get through things in the past. So it seems like this long distance thing may be worth the effort. This is our last spread and the only nine card one for today. Rekindle the fire spread. The last three cards all go together. I labeled these cards seven, eight, nine, but they don't have to be read in, in, uh, in order. Rather, after you put out those three cards, look at them together as if they are telling one story. Feel free to put them in a different order if you're having trouble seeing how they fit together. The Emerald Forest actually labeled the top card seven and didn't label the other two cards at all, but I like being able to easily see the number of cards I need ahead of time, which is why I changed the presentation for you. The Two of Swords is the first, is what first attracted you to your partner. I would say that this means that you were attracted to someone who was decisive and maybe even someone who helped you out of a tight spot, and that was what really initially drew you to them. The Six of Wands indicates that you've learned that they are a proud person who really likes to be acknowledged and thanked. Card three is interesting. It's the Nine of Swords, which is usually about anxiety or grief. Maybe you like to do things together like skydiving, things that could cause stress, but that was part of the fun and appeal. The Five of Cups, and that is also an interesting card, like the last one. It doesn't make obvious sense here. It is usually about disappointment or, or pessimism. I'm going to go with the literal image on the card and say that you always wanted to get away and go to the country to go fly fishing or something like that. The Magician Reverse is showing that you made time for these activities by whatever means possible, sometimes both by calling out sick from, from work on the same day. Uh, what you are missing in your daily lives that can bring you closer is the hangman. He is saying that you need to both just sit still and be together, not doing anything in particular, just both taking a break from life at the same time and in the same place. Cards seven through nine are the nine of wands, three of cups, and seven of cups. The traits or values that you love in your partner are their daring, their love of life, and going back to that first card, I think the seven of cups is again bringing up the decisiveness of your partner. They're someone who makes up their mind to do something and does it, and it's usually something fun, even if it can be a bit exhausting. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed learning these spreads for romance and relationships. If you are interested in getting a reading done similar to what I've showed you today, please feel free to email me at info at spillthetealeaf.com to book a reading with me. In my next video, I'll highlight a different type of spread, and I do hope you'll join me for that. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and comment below if you want me to cover something specific sooner rather than later. Thanks for watching, everyone, and have a wonderful day.